This is a brief summary of the development of a method to measure the dissolution of tofacitamin ointment during manufacturing. Our goal was to develop a method to measure the dissolution of API particles in the presence of many air bubbles generated during manufacturing. The image on the bottom left shows a representative example of the tofacitinib ointment with all of the air bubbles. The image on the right shows a magnification of the image. Careful inspection shows the presence of undissolved API particles, which are difficult to discern with all of the air bubbles. Similarly, Jeff Weber of PSAG demonstrated that both FBRM and UV also had difficulties measuring the API dissolution rate due to the air bubbles. Therefore, our goal was to develop a new method in which the air bubbles could be screened out and we could get accurate measurement of the API dissolution. The method chosen to measure the API dissolution was to use the biofringent properties of the API particles. The following picture shows the lab setup used to evaluate this technique. Briefly, the setup consists of a light source, which traverses through a polarizer. Once it goes through the polarizer, it traverses through the sample, which it interacts with all of the sample, including the air bubbles and API. Typically, there is a second polarizer, not shown here. And then finally, the images are recorded on a camera. To help explain the setup used to measure the API is the following illustration. Similar to the picture, it consists of a light source light passes through our first polarizer. The polarization state of the polarizer is indicated by the vertical arrow. The light then goes through our sample in which it interacts with air bubbles, API particles, or anything else in our sample. The light then goes through a secondary polarizer referred to as the analyzer, which can be oriented either parallel or perpendicular to the first polarizer. Finally, the light is detected by our camera in the image of which is shown on the right hand side. To explain the relationship between the polarization state and the resulting image is as follows. When the analyzer is parallel oriented with the first polarizer, all the light that passes through our sample also passes through the analyzer and is picked up by our video camera. In this case, both the air bubbles and the API particles are equally shown. However, if the analyzer is oriented such so polarization state is perpendicular to the polarizer, then the only light that comes through is light that has been optically rotated, in this case, shown here. The resulting image shows the bright spots of the API where the light has been rotated and hence passes through our analyzer, whereas the unrotated light that goes through our air bubbles, for the most part, is not detected. The following further illustrates the viability of using the biofringence of the API particles to measure dissolution. The setup is very similar to the previous setup, the only difference being is the analyzer has been offset to the right so that only part of the light passes through the analyzer. In this case, light that goes through the sample but does not go through the analyzer, as shown here, shows both the bright bubbles, the light source, and the API, and therefore it's difficult to see the API. Conversely, light that traverses through the sample and then through the analyzer, as shown over here, screens out most of the air bubbles due to the lack of rotation of light and therefore the API particles become much more visible. The image on the bottom is simply a processed image of the top, in which case has been threshold. This just demonstrates that a computer can be used to objectively analyze the video in which we could pick out the API shape, the size, or the concentration. While the lab setup does show the viability of the method to measure the API dissolution, it is not appropriate for manufacturing. However, the following illustrates a possible method to implement this in the manufacturing. And the image on the bottom left shows a recirculation loop. In this case, part of the recirculation loop could be cut and reconfigured with a tricloter clamp in which a new apparatus could be put in line of the manufacturing process, which consists of the entire setup. The, the illustration on the right demonstrates a possible setup. In the back, we would have a light source, followed by a polarizer. It would then go through our recirculation loop followed by another polarizer and a detector. The total cost of this whole setup would probably be, be under $1,000. Instead of modifying the recirculation loop, it is possible to put this entire setup inside a fairly compact instrument. The image on the left shows an instrument developed between Joel Hawkins and Mettler Toledo, termed the Oculus. This setup is very similar to the setup that was used in the lab scale. The image on the right shows the inner workings of the Oculus. At the tip is a light source, followed by a polarizer. Then there's a sample chamber in which the, the fluid flows through, followed by 
a secondary polarizer, and finally, some kind of video recorder. The image in the middle shows a video analysis of tofacitinib ointment using the oculus. The following shows how the images produced by the oculus can be analyzed by a computer to produce output similar to that of an FBRM or UV. In the upper left is raw video recorded by the oculus. In the upper right is a, a contour plot of the intensities. Bright red or yellow spots correspond to bright spots from the original oculus image, whereas blue and black represent dark spots. The image in the bottom left <coughs> is a thresholded image of the contour plots. Anything that is colored red is considered to be API-like. Anything that is blue is the absence of API. The experiment starts out when the sample is cool and is gently heated. As you can see, the viscosity decreases and the intensity that is measured by the oculus decreases with time. The inset on the right is a moving window just showing the last 50 data points recorded during the image analysis. This strongly suggests that we can use the oculus as a measure similar to that of FBRM to measure the API dissolution in the presence of many air bubbles. In conclusion, we've shown that the optical activity of the API particles can be used to provide a method to measure the dissolution of API in the presence of non-optically active materials such as air bubbles. In the lab setup, we've used just simple polarizers and a camera which cost less than $1,000. However, it would require equipment modification to implement manufacturing. Using the Oculus, it is possible to integrate the entire setup into a compact instrument. This instrument can probably be inserted into ports already available for FBRM and UV. The computer algorithm shows that we can provide quantitative real-time data of undissolved API. And it is worth noting that the computer algorithms could be developed to also provide shape and size information for inline process control.